Greetings, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cheryl Jennison DeProza, and I'm to- joined today by Michael Johnson, Paul Johnson. And today we're going to be talking about how Q5X and Axiant Digital work so well together and give you the insi- insight into that. But before we get into that, just a few items of housekeeping. Uh, first of all, as you may realize, we are broadcasting to you from our from different circumstances than our normal controlled environments. We are coming to you from our homes. So please be patient if we run into any audio or technical issues. We'll do our best to work through them, um, but we are definitely not in our usual controlled environment, so please be patient. Um, As we go through the session, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those into the question section. Um, If you can't find the question section, if you're logged in through the web app, just sort of look for that question mark in a circle. You can access the questions there. Or if you're using sort of the desktop extension, look for a dark gray toolbar with an orange box with a white arrow on it and click on that orange box with the white arrow to get to the question section. Type in any questions you have, but please be patient. We will be holding on questions until the end of the session. And then lastly, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. Uh, It usually takes us about a week to get it edited and make sure the audio and video all look and sound great. But once it's available, it will be available for on-demand viewing at shore.com slash webinars. That's also where we keep all of our other past archive webinars. So please feel free to go there. See all of our great content. That's shore.com slash webinars. All right, that's enough of me. Let's get into the good stuff. Take it away, gentlemen. Hey, everybody. Um, Michael Johns here from Sure. Uh, I'm really excited today to share with you um, this collaboration between Q5X and Sure. Um, this is the second of a series of webinars we'll be uh, sharing with you all about this collaboration. The first one uh, was a little bit more um, just an announcement and some information about the business relationship between Sure and Q5X. And I will definitely be covering that again for those who who didn't see that in brief. Um, And we're also gonna get into some uh, very specific details about the product itself. Paul is here uh, to share uh, details about the different form factors of products, the use cases that they're used in. Um, And then we'll wrap up the conversation, of course, with an FAQ, but before that, uh, with a little section on the various software components um, that that you can use when using the combination of Q5X and Sure products. Um, Oh, and also care and maintenance as well. A very popular topic is how to clean and maintain products, obviously, because of the current situation we're in. And uh, and fortunately, uh, there's a really great story behind how easy these products are from a maintenance standpoint. And so we'll share those details um, with you all as well. So I wanted to start out just by um, revisiting the um, <clears throat> the backstory between Sure and Q5X, um, how we got into the relationship that we're in, we're in now and, and what the specific business relationship is. Uh, So Q5X is a company based in London, Ontario. Um, Many of you on the call have probably heard of them already. Uh, They're well known in the sports broadcast and reality TV market uh, with making unique form factor transmitters. Uh, The legacy uh, components are are compatible with with many analog um, receivers, Sure being one of them. Um, And the new products that we're we're talking about today are the new solutions that are, um, are compatible with Axiom Digital. Uh, a brand that we know uh, to be well known for for niche solutions, um, flexible transmitters, uh, transmitters that are designed specifically with a particular user in mind, not a specific use case, but in some cases a particular user in mind um, with lots of customization for uh, the professional uh, uh, sports world. Uh, With lots of demand for digital encrypted wireless, uh, Q5X wants to uh, obviously work with a partner. Um, they, they have many solutions uh, on the table, continuing to work with Analog, develop their own digital solution, work with Sure to create a digital solution. So with all those things on the table, uh, it turned out that the collaboration with Sure uh, is, 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 is what we ended up with. And, um, uh, and again, really, really excited about that. So uh, the way that it all works is Sure actually created a, a radio module. And that module is sold to Q5X. Uh, Q5X certifies it with SE, FCC, and the various uh, 
uh, governing, you know, uh, uh, regulatory bodies uh, where, where we're selling it, and, and then packages them into their various uh, lines of transmitters that Paul will get into in a moment. Uh, sure, we'll also be a distributor for some of those core products as well. Um, and it starts with two key products, uh, the player mic and the aqua mic, which uh, Paul will go in depth on in a moment. So the benefits to us um, are that um, we want to be able to be in a space where some of our competitors are, specifically with broadcast and reality uh, TV shows. Uh, one of the unique uh, uh, value propositions of Q5X is that their um, products are ultra portable and designed for these um, particular use cases in mind. And so we want to take our digital solution and leverage it in these applications where our competitors are currently at. And, uh, and, and so that's one of the main focuses here. Um, you know, we already have a very wide range of transmitters in the Axiom Digital line. We have AD series transmitters, which are not Showlink enabled, that can use AA batteries. We make things like a frequency diversity handheld and a micro body pack, both which are Showlink enabled. Um, but that still leaves out certain things in the portfolio. We, we, we don't make anything that you could bend almost in half. Um, and we don't make um, something that, um, that's already being specified by some major sports leagues. So the ability for us to be able to develop an Axiom Digital solution allows us to um, essentially have the best of both worlds. We can uh, utilize the form factors and unique um, the capabilities of the Q5X product while also leveraging the capabilities of the Axiom Digital radio in our, um, in our receiver ecosystem. Um, another benefit of working with Q5X is that you do a lot of customization um, at low volumes, and this is a key part of their business that Paul will, will speak to. Um, in fact, um, if a particular reality show or particular production um, needs a, a player mic with a certain connector or a certain uh, unique feature, um, the folks in London are, are, are poised to be able to do that much better than a large manufacturing operation like Sure. So we can actually work with Q5X as a partner to um, create custom solutions for you, uh, depending on what you need out in the market. Uh, the certified module has already been used in, in, in custom products, or it will be um, in the future. Um, we have an analog solution right now that Q5X has been, has been doing um, with the Radio City Music Hall. That's an analog module that they've been using. And so this module could be used in, um, in, 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 in custom applications in the digital realm as well. But in case of it working with an analog receiver, it would work with an Axiom digital receiver. So just taking that capability and extending it on to the, to the digital range. So moving on, uh, Paul Johnson is here, the CEO of Q5X to tell you a little bit about the product line. Paul? Super. Thank you very much. And uh, it, it's great to be working side by side with Sure. Uh, so today we'd like to go through the presentation and uh, talk a little bit in more detail about some of the, the applications and the specific uh, form factors that Q5X makes. If we go from the next slide. So let's let's start out uh, in last uh, seminar, I showed a short video. So I'll show you a different short video now. And this just gives an example of some of the applications and, and some of the, uh, the features that Q5X has. Mic'd up for us tonight. I think I'm mic'd too. No, dude, look at my back. Is there a mic there? What's up, brother? Heard, yeah. you're, heard you're up all night catching him on chains and Pikachu. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, but you're not the player, you're the ref. I I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but how do I get a penalty for hitting you? You're not even playing. Gator, can you sign a stick for me? Yeah, yeah. Here, go! <laughs> oh! We gotta put a do not disturb shirt on or something. Hey, you look, you look like um, one of the old players, man. <laughs> you will probably laugh when I say this. If you ever on the left side with the ball, and they ain't playing D, I can only catch a lot on this side. Try to get one. <laughs> There's no way this thing still works. I poured so much water on myself. <laughs> okay, remember you had a mic on? Oh, crap. <laughs> Q5X 
Okay. So that gives you a taste of, of sort of some of the applications that we've had. And we've been doing this for a long time. Uh, Q5X uh, started really 20 years ago. We, and our initial applications were all in the sports industry. And uh, we've done a lot of things with a whole series of different sports leagues over the years. Um, so as we've been working on all of this, we've uh, really had a reputation for developing things that are very small, uh, but fundamentally very safe, and that that ends up being one of the biggest situ biggest requirements in the sports. So things are uh, ultimately very safe, and uh, and also very rugged. So over the last uh, twenty years, we've had a reputation. We've we've really pushed this into almost all the professional sports leagues in North America, and and have expanded to many professional sports leagues around the world. We're doing uh, a lot of work in uh, Australia. We do work in uh, Europe. We do rugby. We do. Uh, Aussie football, and in India we do a sport called kabaddi, which if you haven't had a chance to watch, you should really watch kabaddi. It, it's, it's a phenomenal sport. Um, about a dozen years ago, we then got involved in doing remote control, and this is uh, another aspect of ours. Ours was really the first wireless remote control, RF remote control system in the marketplace, and uh, we had this handheld remote control, the mic commander that you see in this photograph, and it, it really enables us to be able to control all of the functions of the transmitter without touching the transmitter, which is a big deal when you're doing things in a production or doing things in professional sports, because once the transmitter is put onto a player, you have no ability to touch it. Uh, over the years, we decided that the people really were, you know, what they were looking for when they were buying our, our products was really our transmitters and receivers for us were just a necessary evil because the, the unique properties were, were these very innovative transmitters. And what we early on did in, in the analog world historically is we developed the ability to um, have compatibility with various other receivers so people didn't have to buy a new receiver, they could just buy a transmitter and use it with their existing equipment. And uh, as we approached our digital, um, if we just go to the next slide, as we approach the digital world, um, that's really what we've done with Sure now is we, we, we've developed these form factors over the years and we, we think we really have the best of both worlds. We have these custom transmitters that are designed, they're flexible, they're waterproof, they're rugged. And we're able to really combine that with Sure, who has developed what, what I feel personally, and I can say this, uh, I, I think this is the best digital system in the world. Uh, Axiom Digital is well proven, is gaining market share like crazy. And uh, as, as we look for a partner that we want to associate with, this this is it. Um, I think we, we together we've got some, some very, very special products and we'll be bringing these proven technologies to, to new markets uh, and new applications because of our existing markets we, we really didn't have the ability to have encryption uh, in, in our markets and in some of the uh, the sure's existing markets it didn't have these innovative form factors which are very advantageous. So I'd like to spend a little bit of time just talking about the the various products and you'll see there uh, on the uh, left side is the Aquamic. So the Aquamic actually is a is a totally submersible product. Uh, we've designed this uh, again many years ago, and uh, it's available in all of our product lines, the analog and the digital. Um, it, to do this, we actually, as we manufacture these cases, we take each case, each case before it's assembled is tested to uh, to two atmospheres. And so these these really are good to about 60 feet uh, tested before before we uh, put them together and, and, and ship them out. Uh, the product is used obviously in water sports applications, um, but as well, what we've done with the Aquamic is we made a very long life version of it. And that's used a lot by reality TV. The, the driver for that was to have one microphone that could be used in a 24 hour a day production. And with two transmitters, be able to cycle those through uh, changing them twice a day and be able to go 24 hours a day. That's a very small body pack, smaller than most of the body packs in the market. Not our smallest, but, but still relative to others, a very small body pack and, uh, and is totally, uh, totally environment proof. So, uh, and I say environment proof, one of the, the most significant applications we do with this in sports world is we bury these in the dirt for Major League Baseball. So if you hear the sounds of the game uh, from around the pitcher's mound, from around home plate, from around first, uh, third base, often those sounds are actually coming through our transmitters, which are buried in the dirt close to those locations and picked up. The middle one is the rubber uh, rubber cased player mic. And that's something that we really developed in conjunction with the the NBA. Um, it's used now by many sports leagues, but really the innovation came from, from the NBA. And uh, it's a, uh, it's totally cased in rubber, it's flexible. And beyond um, everything else, 
the uh, it's safe. And the, the, the primary driving factor for all of these were, were the fact that it's safe. There's two versions of it. There's a, the one that Michael's actually holding up in the in the camera is our regular player mic. It's the first one we did. Uh, the NBA came to us and said, you know, we'd like you like a little bit smaller. This one is good for eight hours. We didn't need eight hours. They only needed four hours. In fact, they said two and a half hours for a basketball game. So we've got a four hour version, which is which is shorter. And I'll show you that in a second. Then beside that, uh, again, is the coach mic. Again, this is something we've done uh, as, a, as a very recent innovation. And in fact, the, the, the first uh, versions of this were used in the NBA All-Star Game in Chicago this February. So this coach mic has a, a, an integrated rocker mute switch on the end of it. And you can see that scalloped shield on the end of the, uh, on the, end of the transmitter. That uh, is a, it's a, it's a, a very large, easy to use um, uh, rocker switch for muting. And so without even looking at the transmitter, you can just put your hand down, lay your finger on that switch and turn and mute it up or mute it or unmute it. And there's two lights on it uh, indicating uh, red uh, when it's muted, green when it's transmitting. And it's set up so it can be oriented either horizontally or vertically, uh, worn on the belt horizontally or mounted vertically if you were to wear it inside a jacket pocket, which a lot of coaches do. Um, so the uh, it's a, a, a very small, very compact, fully encrypted um, version of, of a coach mic. So very, very uh, good for, for sports. Also great for corporate applications. If you can imagine uh, having a CEO wanting to have a private conversation, the ability to be able to easily mute the transmitter without having to fumble around with the tiny mute switch is advantageous. The other advantage of this is from the handheld remote control uh, from the mixing board, if somebody accidentally mutes it or forgets to uh, turn it back on when they go back to the podium to speak, uh, from with the remote control, you can override the manual mute switch uh, from the remote control. So you can turn the mic back on if you need to. Next slide. So our, uh, our transmitters all have internal lithium-ion batteries. So as we as we look at these, there our standard transmitters all have an eight hour battery. As I just referred to earlier, um, we have a special player mic short version, uh, which has a four hour battery, and that was developed at the request of the NBA for basketball again to make the transmitter smaller. And we have a special Aqua mic long life, which has a sixteen hour battery, and that was driven primarily by reality television to have very long life batteries. Uh, these are available again in both our analog and our digital transmitters. Um, and uh, we have other uh, form factors as well, other, other models of our transmitters. And those generally have an eight hour battery life. The next slide. So the, the heart of, of the uh, all the Q5X systems is really this mic commander and, and our remote control system, which we call RCAS, which is remote control audio system. Uh, the mic commander is a handheld unit. It will control up to 32 transmitters. Um, you can actually plug the, uh, the mic commander in. I'll show you this in a few minutes. You can plug it in uh, with a USB connector, a micro USB connector into the top of the unit and run it uh, on a computer with a computer software program called Mic Control. And with Mic Control, you can actually control up to 100 transmitters. So it's, it's a very, very versatile um, piece of equipment. The nice thing about the Mic Commander is it's mobile. You can walk around with it. Uh, if you're at a football game, you can walk along the sidelines and uh, you can control everything on the football field from the sidelines. There's no need to run Cat5 cables. There's no need to have permanent installations of, of, a, of a gateway of any kind. It, it moves around. So if you want to take it to the dressing room, you can take it to the dressing room. If you want to take it to the parking lot with a, with a, a mobile camera, you can do that. There's no problem. The, the Mic Control moves to where you need to be. It's, a, it's very versatile that way. Next slide. All, all of our uh, all of our products uh, basically have all these features. The, the, the two uh, that I would emphasize for this purpose are the remote control, which I've just spoken about, but as well, uh, as Michael referred to earlier, uh, they're sanitizable. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in a few minutes, but really all of our products are, are products that can be wiped down with, with uh, isopropyl alcohol and uh, can be totally sanitized that way. The nice thing is then with the remote control, uh, you don't have to touch them again. You can get them directly to the talent. 
The next slide. As an example of this, in terms of the, you know, just term this distance workflow, this the picture on the left is actually me standing outside the uh, the dressing room at the NBA All Star Game. So it's, it's sort of an envious position for for many people. Um, but the, the nice feature is that you know we had six transmitters inside uh, that were. Uh, in the jerseys of the players, and from standing outside the door of the dressing room, we could turn them on, turn them off, do all the controls without being close to them. So, beyond the the aspect of, of the safety that I'm referring to now, it's also nice because you're you're not actually interfering with the talent in any way. So once the talent is is miked, you don't mess with their head. They're preparing for a performance, preparing for a game, or or doing anything in theater and film. You're, you're not interfering with them and getting into their head. They, they can be totally absorbed in, in doing their job and giving a great performance. All of the control features can be done from a distance. And with these tiny, tiny transmitters, they very quickly forget to be, they're even wearing them. And so it, it really does allow people to uh, have a, a better performance. And, and we take a lot of pride in that. Uh, the center photograph is actually showing the coach mic, but the coach mic used in a corporate application is particularly attractive for women because it can actually be mounted under a dress as this is. And, and what, once it's mounted, they can feel through the fabric for that rocker switch is where, where this, uh, the woman's finger is right now. And that can be felt through the fabric and they can mute or and unmute it. Uh, with, and it's, the transmitter itself is totally invisible to anybody. So it's a, it's a very nice feature. Uh, obviously there's a, as I said, there's a, a horizontal belt clip as well. So a man can wear it attached to a belt or can wear it uh, on the inside of a jacket pocket uh, for a suit coat. On the picture on the right shows, uh, as I talked about from a sanitizing perspective, once you wipe this down with alcohol and you've attached a mic to it, you can put the whole unit into a Ziploc bag. And if the, the people you're putting the microphone on are experienced to know how to how to mount a, a lav mic so that it actually functions properly, there's no need for the A2 to even touch the transmitter after it's been cleaned. You can pass it to the talent, sealed and sanitized in a bag, and they can put it on themselves and everything, all the control is done from the remote control. So a nice feature in a, in a COVID environment. So in terms of the, the mics, uh, Q5X has a, a special mic connector. And I'll, once I get a chance to pull one up, I'll show you in, in more detail. It's a, it's a single pin Lebo connector and that we use that on most of our products. Um, it's, it's unique to us. Uh, and we picked it very specifically because it, it's, it's very, one is very rugged, it's very small, and it, it will absolutely will not come undone while in use. Uh, we're concerned about threaded mic connectors because a number of our customers have indicated they, they get nervous about the threads coming undone on threaded connectors. So this one is actually snaps in place and is, is firmly connected. For our aqua mic, we use, I use a limo connector as well. It's a six pin limo connector, which is waterproof. Um, and it's, that's unique to the aqua mic. Uh, we had talked as well about custom projects. If we go to the next slide, uh, it will show a couple of the things we've done. Uh, we, we actually have, uh, for the MBA, started out as a custom product. And um, the nice thing about this is, as we mic the jersey, and you can see pictures here of the mic cable being put inside the jersey, the mic uh, transmitter actually sits in the little pouch that you see in the middle, and that goes into a, a pocket that is stitched into the side of every MBA jersey. So every MBA jersey has a pocket stitched along the rib cage uh, to hold a transmitter. And then you can see them sitting there on the left-hand side. The interesting thing is we're actually miking the jersey, we're not miking the player. So that again makes it so that the, the mic is put in place. There's no need to come in contact with the players at all. It can be done hours uh, in advance of the game. The mics are put in standby, and then at game time with the remote control, they can be put into transmit mode. The next slide. Then some of the other projects we've done, uh, you can see on the left, there, these are actually the innards of, of golf hole mics. And so we've done this uh, for, for Fox, uh, when Fox is doing the US Open. So we actually put these in, in the base of the, there's a cover that goes on top of the, the these units that's waterproof, they're all sealed. There's O-rings that seal everything together. And we actually put a, a mic uh, in the base of the golf hole for, for the PGA. And with that, you can listen to conversations all across the green the mic elements it's uh near the surface um at the top of the golf hole and uh the, again with remote control you can do these these have two large 
batteries you can see these can be put in uh, at, at sunrise and they're good for the entire day and they take them out at the end of the day and recharge them overnight the the middle picture is of rowing buoys so these go along the course uh, of a rowing course which is two kilometers long they place these near the camera stations and uh, there's a mic element sits on the top of these all of the internals of the microphone are inside the buoy all that's uh, all that's visible on the outside is the mic element and one waterproof cap which has a usb connector underneath it and you just loosen that cap and you can recharge the uh, the transmitters overnight and there there's uh, there's no need to do anything else everything else is handled from the remote control system and uh, as Michael uh, had referred to earlier, uh, we're very proud of our project we've done with Radio City Music Hall. So back in 2009, we actually did the first installation of our, our transmitters uh, into the heels of the tap shoes for the Rockettes. And uh, they've been going ever since. Uh, this is certainly, I think, one of the most significant, I would say, torture tests for, for a, a, a wireless microphone transmitter to have all these years of, of use uh, inside the uh, heels of the tap shoes for the Rockettes at Radio City. So these products are going to be available both uh, through Shure. They can also be purchased directly from Q5X. Uh, the transmitters, the mic commanders, and the receivers are being uh, sold uh, by Shure, and Shure has items for those who can ship them from in their inventory. Um, we uh, can do the transmitters and mic commanders. Uh, receivers need to be purchased through Shure, uh, but we will uh, be able to terminate microphones, special termination of microphone uh, currently. Is, is being done by Q5X. We can do that either by uh, sourcing microphones from us. If you have microphones that you'd wish to have terminated, you can send them to us and we can terminate them uh, just for a, for a termination fee. Or as well, we can send you specific directions about how to, how to uh, connect these special uh, connectors from Limo. And if you've got a, a good technician, you can, you can use them internally that way uh, we as well can do custom projects as, as mj talked about you know we're, we're very happy to do uh, low volume custom products and to do that we've actually uh, certified the radio module so we can we can make a, uh, a new product without having to recertify it the, the, the module itself is already certified and as well we have this whole series of analog transmitters and receivers which have been around for for two decades so next slide. What I'd like to do now is I'll, I'll, I'll take a minute and I'll show you some of these things I talked about, um, starting with the Aquamic. And the Aquamic actually um, is here. You can see it's, it's a, still a very small one. This is actually uh, a regular Aquamic. The other, the, the long life Aquamic, Aquamic is good for 16 hours. And as you look at this, the unique thing about this is that there really are no controls on it at all. There, there's the three connectors on the top, one for each of the antennas, and then this is the six pin Limo connector I was talking about. And in order to charge it, we actually have a little dongle. So this dongle has a six pin connector on it. And if you watch this, you can plug the uh, this in, thread it up. And from this connector, then there's a uh, USB connector. You plug the micro USB into this part of it and you can charge it through there. So that's really all is required. You disconnect it, and then you can wire it up with a similar microphone with a, a with the six pin connector on it. There, get it in the camera. So this connector again hooks up with the microphone. Uh, totally submersible, uh, and I say uh, the the long life can have up to sixteen hours. The uh, this is the player mic. Um, and was, this is the, the full size version of it. And uh, I'm going to show you now it's flexible. And so I, I don't recommend that anybody do this on a regular basis. A couple of things. One, it's rugged. So I put this in the camera, you can pound this. I mean, there is no problem at all. This is rugged. It's going to stand up to anything you do. We put this on hockey players. Hockey players wear it on their pads and check into the boards and these things survive as well as flexible. And so as part of our design, when we do this, we actually flex them to 90 degrees. So you can actually take this and you can bend it this much. Again, I, I wouldn't encourage you to do this on a regular basis with your transmitters once you get them, but they will stand that. There's no, there's no issue at all with bending them like that. Um, so in terms of, again, the whole possibility of uh, these being very safe. You put these on an athlete. In fact, it's almost like padding because it, 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 if, if someone was to take a direct hit from a hockey puck, this would actually protect them. It wouldn't be a, a, an injury risk. Um, the smaller version of this, which we use, we designed for basketball again, still flexible. Um, and uh, this one is good for four hours. These have a mic connector on. This is a single pin limo. 
get this in front of the camera and it, it plugs in just very simply like this. So it's now connected, it's solid. You cannot take that apart. There's no threads for it to come undone. In fact, it can spin if it needs to. You can spin this and uh, that actually allows it for the, the cable to become less tangled, easier to disconnect. As we do this, one thing we do, and we'll show a photo of this later, is as you're mounting this, we recommend that you actually take the, uh, the, the actual uh, mic connector, put it on the side of the transmitter like this, and then wrap a piece of tape around it. Bring this down so it doesn't interfere with the antennas. Wrap a piece of tape around it, and that gives a bit of a strain relief. And then once that is taped in place, now you can tug on this. There's no risk of this breaking. This cable, in fact, is over 30 pounds brake strength. It's, it's a very, very high strength uh, mic cable. It's small, it's only one millimeter, but uh, very, very rugged, and it will not break. Um, and if in the case of somebody actually totally yanked on this, if you've got this taped off the way I suggested with the strain relief, if there's going to be a, a breakage, it'll break at the mic end of the mic cable, not on the transmitter end. Um, this is the coach mic. And so it's a, it's a great product. And you can see I've got it set up now with the uh, mic, uh, the belt clip, or actually a belt clip, it's a pocket clip, a vertical clip on this, so it can go inside a jacket pocket. Um, as I said, nice, beautiful uh, rocker switch on the end. So it's very easy to uh, very easy to do. Just lay your hand on it. And then as you can see, um, the now it's muted. The LED is red. It's now transmitting. LED is green. So very, very uh, broken. And again, small, um, single piece do capability. And finally, the mic commander. As I said, this is the heart of the entire system. Uh, if you turn it on, you can see the display uh, comes up. There's all the all the transmitter information there, and uh, you can go through, and it brings up all of the information on a particular transmitter. You can turn it on, turn it off. You can mute it. It gives you the battery telemetry, and uh, you can control the power level. You can do really any of the controls for the uh, for the transmitters. With that, I'll turn it back over to MJ. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Paul. Um, every time we talk about this, I get more and more excited about the possibilities our users are going to have with uh, with this collaboration. So um, as promised, uh, we did title um, this uh, webinar as a how to. So we definitely are going to get um, a little deep in the weeds, actually, when it comes to the interoperability between uh, these two products. So um, I put together a presentation where I have screenshots of the receiver and um, I and I, I demonstrate how to update the firmware, what the firmware versions are, um, and a little bit of information about wireless workbench and how uh, wireless workbench renders the uh, Q5X transmitters in its interface. So on to the next slide. Uh, first, I want to talk about the supported firmware. And this is a really, really important piece. Um, Obviously, if you were to somehow take possession of a Q5X transmitter right now, try to sync it to your rack, it wouldn't work. Um, there are four key components, but I want to talk about the first two here, the receiver firmware package and the transmitter firmware package. Uh, when you typically download software uh, through Sure's update utility, which I have a slide on next, um, you download the transmitter package to the receiver, and then you update the receiver. Um, if you do that, um, the transmitter update will fail because the transmitter update will come first. The receiver doesn't recognize this Q5X package and it'll just say not compatible. So you actually have to update the receiver firmware first. This is one of the rare instances in the Sure ecosystem where you have to do that. So you first update your receiver to 182. Now your receiver's on 182. On 1, it will recognize the transmitter package 1252. So those are the two steps. Step one, update your receiver. Step two, update your transmitter. If you just let SUU update the transmitter um, uh, hosted image on the receiver first, it'll fail. And that's okay. Uh, just note that you have to update the receiver first. Uh, sure Software Update Utility uh, 2474, which I believe is the current version we're on now, um, or later. Uh, so it, it will be supporting, obviously, Q5X packages in, in perpetuity, as the or later uh, disclaimer connotes. Um, and then Sure Wireless Workbench 613.2.125. Uh, um, supports um, Q5X. 
there are a couple really small, not necessarily bugs, but warts I'm gonna share with you, um, just so you know what you're, what you're seeing when you look at Wireless Workbench. Um, we have another update coming out uh, later in the year that um, will clean up any little minor cos cosmetic issue with Q5X, but I think you'll see in my, in, in my demo, um, these minor cosmetic things are probably more annoying to people like me and UX developers than they actually are to users. They're just minor little things. So uh, I'll share those with you um, at the end of the section. Uh, so first thing that you need to do is obviously update your firmware. And you do that by going into uh, the receiver's device configuration menu, and you find the uh, submenu called uh, transmitter firmware update. Once you're in this menu, um, and assuming you've already updated your receiver to 1282, you'll see this message. And, and note, for those of you experienced with updating firmware, there's a new message here. It says Q5XTX uh, must be on. So that's a very important uh, thing that's a little bit different than um, than other products. When when Sure products are firmware updated, um, you don't necessarily have to have RF on. RF can be on, RF can be off. Obviously the transmitter has to be powered, um, but um, it will accept a firmware update either way. Because of the way that we designed the Q5X transmitters, um, the FPGA doesn't really wake up unless the RF is being uh, transmitted. So in order to firmware update, you have to turn the, uh, tr the, the radio on. So uh, the, your first step after um, updating your receiver firmware is taking your Q5X transmitter that's hopefully charged up, and uh, through the mic commander, you would turn the RF on. Once RF is on, you line up the IR window and you should see a successful firmware update as um, shown in the bottom. If the TX firmware, is, I'm sorry, if the TX uh, RF is off, then you'll see this firmware update failed. So just a little thing to note. And, and with respect to IR ports, notice um, on the image I have on the right, circled in yellow, there are actually uh, four little holes. There's obviously two for uh, light pipes for charge and, uh, and status LEDs but there's also two little holes that um, uh, um, allow for the IR update to take place too. So there's a little IR port behind, behind there. So you would just align uh, this general area up to the receiver uh, to do a firmware update. And uh, that's, that's firmware updates. So moving on to the next slide, I wanted to show you um, the interoperability between uh, 84 and how it, how it shows up on the home screen. Uh, so once you've successfully synced a, a Q5X transmitter to a receiver, um, I have two pictures here. Uh, the first one I have is obviously of the rack receiver itself. The second one is a close-up of this very same screen that you're seeing on the rack. So you'll notice that I have um, my, um, my Q5X transmitter synced to channel one, to, to John's channel here. And um, already we have enough information to know that this product is successfully synced. How so? Um, number one, we are receiving RF. You can see there's RSSI and we have blue LEDs letting us know that we're locked uh, to the receiver. Uh, we also have this little indicator that says Q5, if you notice that. Q5 um, tells you what the channel quality is. So just like all other um, Axiom digital transmitters, our digital modulation is sending information about the channel quality and that exists in, in the Q5X transmitter as well. Uh, we can see battery life as well. Um, it's currently shown as one bar because I, I just barely charged my transmitter when I, when I did these screenshots, but it will show somewhere between one and five bars. And uh, um, you'll see more views of battery life as we get into some of the other menus. And then you'll see up here in the right, upper right corner, you hit STD, that's telling, the that's telling you the receiver is in standard mode. So um, this, um, this Q5X transmitter is transmitting at full RSSI and five bars of channel quality with albeit low battery life. Um, on 474, 625 um, in standard mode. Um, notice the encryption key up there. I just put that uh, there to inform you that just like other Axiom digital transmitters, the encryption feature works. You don't have to use encryption with Q5X, um, but more and more of our customers, especially in the markets that Paul uh, services, um, want and, and in some cases need encryption. You can imagine if you're miking up a bunch of NFL players, why well, you might want that signal to be encrypted for, for a variety of reasons, uh, play calling, you know, the foul language that might happen on the field, et cetera. So having that encrypted signal ensures that those, those communications remain private to those that need them. 
So moving on to the next slide, I'll show you the channel home. Uh, so uh, as, as you all know, and, and by the way, I should have mentioned, this isn't a um, meant to be a, a remedial sort of review of Axiom Digital. We've done a lot of webinars and put a lot of information out about Axiom Digital. So if, if things like home screen views and channel home views confuse you as I talk through them, I really encourage you to see some of the earlier uh, presentations we did on Axiom Digital. In fact, um, there is a 13 video playlist on YouTube uh, that covers a lot of the kind of more basic level topics on, on Axiom Digital. So just needed to get that out of the way. So in, in the receiver, we have the home screen view, which you just saw. And then when you click on a channel button, um, you see the channel home view. So the device home shows you a sort of at a glance global view of all channels. Um, the channel home view shows you details about one specific channel. So when I've synced my, my transmitter to channel one here, um, we have in the, in the yellow rectangle I have at the bottom of the, uh, of the, of the uh, screen grab, there's what we call the, uh, the sidebar. And so the sidebar on our, on our um, receiver will share information that's being sent over telemetry from the transmitter. So there are a few things here. There is the uh, battery level. Uh, the battery level, um, as I mentioned, can go between one and five bars. Um, this next thing in brackets is the device ID. Um, if you go into the mic commander, the 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 uh, box that that Paul showed previously, you can actually name um, a transmitter. So, for example, you might want to call the channel John, um, but you might want to call the device um, RF1, or you know you have so you can have two different ways to identify the 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 um the device one by its device name and one by its its channel name as um a lot of a2s and rf coordinators like to do so it's just a dash here right now because i didn't name it anything i probably should have um, but we can name it um anything up to eight characters um it'll get truncated on the on, on this um display at some point um but most people use three or four character sets when they're naming device device ids so um uh, I don't know, Paul, if you could speak to what the character limit is on your mic commander. I thought it was eight, but I think here on, on, on our front panel, it'll, sh it'll truncate after four. Yeah, we, we can go probably to 12. Yeah, so uh, obviously because of the limited space, we, we truncate it here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so if you turn the rotate the, uh, rotate the encoder knob while you're in the channel home view, um, and this is just a nice little tidbit, you notice here that there, it says one uh, at the, on the left and then two on, in the right screen. Um, if you rotate the encoder knob, you can actually um, view more side channel info. So we always show battery life, regardless of what side channel view you're in, because we just feel like that's an important thing users would always want to know. But in the second um, uh, uh, side channel view, you can see that the model is Q5X. Um, whether you're using a player mic or an aqua mic or a coach mic, um, it will always say Q5X. So we won't be able to share with you the granule detail of what specific component it is. Um, but you'll be able to see that it's a Q5X transmitter um, over side channel. Um, and then mic offset, a feature that we have in a lot of digital products, ULXD and of course um, Axiom Digital as well. Um, that's controllable via the mic controller, which I'll uh, or the mic commander, which I'll show you um, in a moment. And um, that's viewable here in the side channel as well. So, so the takeaway here is with respect to interoperability between AD and Q5X, it's very similar to the interoperability between our non show link transmitters. Um, of course, um, Paul mentioned that Q5X has its own control protocol, which I'll sort of get into with respect to interoperability. But when it comes to an AD4 or wireless workbench, we sort of view these transmitters like we view um, non show link enabled transmitters because our control uh, uh, network, the show link, doesn't work with, with Q5X. They have their own control network, which, which we'll get into. Um, so, moving on to the next slide here. Uh, we have another menu called the TX Details view. So, if you once you're in the channel menu, if uh, you click the encoder, that'll give you the channel submenu list. Um, if you find transmitter details, um, you can get into the uh, TX Details view. So, right from the front panel of the receiver, you can see all of this information about uh, the Q5X transmitter. It's basically everything um, that's listed there. So, moving on to the next slide. Okay, now I wanted to talk a little bit about the two software packages. So there are two software packages um, 
that you can use with this ecosystem, but there you use them in different ways. There's of course Q5X's software called Mic Control, which I'll touch on for a moment. And then there's of course the, the well-known Sure Wireless Workbench software as well. Um, there is mixed interoperability between these two between these two software packages and our um, Q5X transmitters. So I wanted to just highlight that um, momentarily. So Q5X software mic control is a software package that you will use to control the microphones as the name mic control connotes. Um, and when you open mic control, um, you get three windows that pop up, um, or actually four if you include the, the background window. Um, but these three child windows in here, uh, one is to uh, configure the session to, to select a, um, a Zigbee channel and to create a link ID, which is basically a four or five, it's a five digit uh, uh, um, binary that allows you to basically create like a like an ATM password for the network if you will so even if you were on the Zigbee channel you need that password in order to get on you could also not use it and basically um, anybody that has a you know a, a, a mic controller uh, could theoretically get on the network but you can also password protect it with this link ID uh, gateway manager gateway manager is what you actually use to connect um, the um, the mic commander to the, uh, the the computer. Uh, so through this gateway manager, you'll find the COM port that your mic commander um, is utilizing, uh, obviously um, via USB in, in the example that I'm referring to now. So the mic commander connects to your computer via USB, you find the right COM port. Once you do that, uh, the mic commander will send all of the information about link transmitters um, and, you and you see them in these channel strips. So right now I only have one channel strip but you know, if, if my mic commander had eight channels or 10 channels, or as Paul mentioned, up to 100, um, we, could, we could show those in, um, in different channel strips. There are three main views. Um, I'd like to show those on the next slide. Uh, so here in the next slide, we show the, the three main views. Uh, one um, is, is sort of like the, the key features, RF and audio mute, uh, battery and, and, and link status. Um, the second one, uh, second tab, allows you to churn, uh, they, it's called mic gain here, but it's, it's mic offset in the case of um, the, uh, um, the Q5X. Uh, some RCAS settings like um, the, uh, uh, the group and channel, uh, for example, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, um, the 2.4 channel, um, and then of course the RF levels for the transmitter itself. And then in the third tab, it, it's more deeper information. You can change um, the rate at which the LEDs blink um, and the speed at which our, our cast updates itself. You could obviously slow it down to get more battery life or speed it up to get more, more frequent updates. Um, and the transmitters are linked to the software via Mic Commander over USB or Ethernet. I should mention there are actually two Mic Commanders. There's a Mic Commander that works with the USB Mini or your micro, and then there's a Mic Commander that works over Ethernet. So depending on what your needs are, um, obviously it powers over Ethernet. Um, the USB version works uh, battery powered. Um, but can also be powered over USB when it's connected um, to the mic, uh, mic commander. Uh, so that, oh, and one other thing, unfortunately, it's not available on iOS. Um, so uh, for those of you that are um, uh, uh, Mac users, um, you know, use a bootcamp and, and open a, a Windows session on your Mac and you'll be able to use mic, mic control. Um, okay. so. I wanted to show you also how things show up in Wireless Workbench. And again, this isn't meant to be um, a training session on Wireless Workbench. My, my, my colleague, Corey Peoples, um, and his predecessor, Sam, have tons of stuff up on, online about Wireless Workbench that you can learn more on. Um, one of the features in Wireless Workbench is uh, the Receiver Property Panel. When you open the Receiver Property Panel, you can see um, information related to the active transmitter. You can see many other things. Um, but what I'm showing you today is um, the active transmitter. So right now I have the Q5X transmitter synced to channel one. I open the property panel and I click on this active TX tab and pretty much all the information that you can see in the um, receiver, you can see in wireless workbench. It's not um, modifiable because again, our control network doesn't work with the Q5X transmitters. This is simply for, for, for monitoring only. Um, but you can see all of these um, capabilities that exist. Um, there are two very minor bugs that we let go in this release that you should be aware of. Um, they are uh, pretty innocuous. One is the model number should say Q5X. 
Um, it's now has a 2.1 next to it. Um, just know that 2.1 only shows up for Q5X transmitters. So if you see that, you have a Q5X transmitter connected. Um, in our next release, it'll say Q5X. Um, down here near the bottom at battery, um, battery type says sure rechargeable. Um, that um, should not confuse you. Um, the, the Q5X transmitters actually use a Q5X sourced internal only lithium ion battery. Um, so they don't work with sure rechargeables, but unfortunately that's what it says uh, today in Workbench. Um, a future update will, will correct that. Um, but other than that, um, everything you see is essentially um, what, uh, uh, you know, what, what the user experience will be like long-term. So that's uh, Q5X and Workbench. Uh, one final slide I wanted to cover, and I wanted to make sure that we have adequate time for Q&A. So right now we have about 10 minutes to do so. Uh, but before we, we take the Q&A, uh, we have two sections. We have this and we have a care and maintenance section. So with 85, ADX and Q5X, I wanted to show you the control ecosystem. So the black lines are UHF. Obviously, the Q5X transmitters and AD or ADX transmitters send UHF over their UHF antennas to the receiver. Um, if it's an Axiom digital uh, modulation scheme, the receiver can decode it and open the channel up. Q5X now has that capability in addition to, obviously, the Axiom digital transmitters having that. Now, um, if you want to change a setting on a Q5X transmitter, um, you must use a mic commander. In fact, Mic Commander is mandatory for use with Q5X transmitters. Q5X transmitters don't have user interfaces, so you must have a Mic Commander. Um, but in addition to being able to, to use it as like a proxy user interface, you can also use it as a proxy network device to get it over USB to uh, your computer as well. So um, that is the extent of the functionality for Q5X. Uh, in terms of terminology, Q5X calls their um, remote control um, RCAS, R-C-A-S, and, and we refer to ours as, as Showlink. So the way Showlink uh, works, if you can point your attention to the yellow arrow, is we send a 2.4 signal, a proprietary 2.4 signal that we call Showlink. Um, coincidentally, uh, Q5X also uses Zigbee in 2.4, but they use their own proprietary protocol called RCAS. Uh, so our 2.4 signal uh, creates a two-way communication between our access point, uh, either an AXT610 or the AD610 access point. And, and remember, folks, these are not handhelds. They don't have user interfaces on them. They're meant basically to be mounted somewhere on the stage or in the play in the field of play um, to create a proxy network connection to your computer. So there are different values to each one. Um, you know, the, the 8610 is probably going to have better range because it's diversity and can operate in high power, um, whereas the mic commander has the benefit of being literally held in the hand. It doesn't need great range if you can just walk over where, where the transmitters are. Um, so, and, and the range on it is still fairly significant, but, but, but I'm talking about range, range differences of like 30 to 40 meters versus 100 meters for the, for the 8610. So it just depends on what your use case is. Um, but once you have that 8610 properly networked to um, a portable, to a portable transmitter and to your receiver over, or to your computer over ethernet, um, the uh, receiver can now recognize it. And if you have a spectrum manager connected, the spectrum manager can serve backup frequencies to it. So um, the spectrum manager will not actively send backup frequencies to Q5X transmitters. You can create backup frequencies for it using the spectrum manager, much like you might create backup frequencies for um, an AD series transmitter. Those are, those are uh, backup frequencies that the spectrum manager can't actually send to the transmitter, but can monitor them. So you can have those, those frequencies, you can monitor them. If you have a problem with the primary frequency, you can at least know the spectrum manager has a backup ready and then you can manually deploy it to the transmitter. So um, that is the extent of the control functionality between ADX and AD and, and Q5X um, systems. So moving on to the next slide, I wanted to talk a little bit about care and maintenance. Uh, so, uh, with the player mic, uh, the, by the way, um, these are some of the, the easiest instructions I've ever had to provide about how to take care of a product. You almost don't have to do anything. Um, you know, if you want, you can, um, uh, you, you can create a cable strain relief and Paul took a quick pic picture, um, using, using scotch tape of how you might want to mount a connector. You guys would probably do that with gaff tape, but it's actually good here with scotch tape because then you can see how it's all mounted um, because it's clear. Um, but that's essentially how, how you would do that. 
It's not necessary, but if you can imagine these transmitters being put in a pouch or being put on a person, um, there is some advantage to, to, to um, using this method or, or your own method to, to creating sort of a, um, a DIY strain relief. In terms of cleaning, um, rinse them with fresh water, um, especially if they're in the presence of, of, of perspiration or anything that has a saline-like uh, destructive environment. Um, I'll note um, the, the material that, that, that is being used on these are, are really robust. Um, you know, pretty much wipe them down with soap and water or just with fresh water um, on a regular basis. But if you need to sanitize them, um, wiping with an isopropyl alcohol swab, um, cloth or with a cotton swab um, works fine as well. And uh, because there isn't any clear plastic bezel on the unit, um, there's no bezel to get foggy. You can just really be, you can really manhandle it and just wipe it down and, and uh, uh, not have to worry about there being any particular areas that you need to avoid. So that's what I meant when I talked about how easy it is to clean. So moving on to the cleaning instructions for the AquaMic, um, it's waterproof to 10 meters um, as specified by Q5X and verified by their internal testing. So um, just a note that the that the AquaMic is actually guaranteed by Q5X to be waterproof um, and not by sure because of course it was Q5X that did the testing and, and not sure. Um, but we, we stand behind Q5X's claims that it's waterproof. Um, so um, the audio quality and RF performance could be impacted if water is able to get into a loose fitting connector. Luckily, um, if you don't know much about a Limo six pin connector, it's like military grade. It's got all sorts of um, uh, um, uh, uh, O-rings around it and gaskets uh, for sweat. So if you just screw it in tight, it's going to be fine. Uh, so this would definitely be user error if, if water got inside of the connector. It's designed for it to not get water into it. Uh, cleaning is very simple. You just rinse it with fresh water, um, especially if you're using the presence of salt water. Now, because it's a waterproof product, you know, uh, it might be used in the, in the next surfboard competition or the next reality show where, um, you know, the, the, the guy gets dumped into the ocean or whatever. So um, uh, applications where you're using, you know, other than fresh water, you especially want to make sure that it's cleaned after, after, after each use. But um, again, a really rugged product. Uh, that could just be wiped down with isopropyl alcohol several times a day without um, without any degradation in its performance or cosmetic appearance. And that's care and maintenance. So uh, folks, I really appreciate um, you sticking around and, and learning all about, about this. Um, I think, Cheryl, we're, it's time for a Q&A. Yes, it is. All right, let's kick these off. Uh, first question, um, is there a chance we'll see a show link variant of the Q5X transmitter to take advantage of things like Frequency Manager? Yeah, um, anything's possible in the future. Right now, our current plans are to go to market with um, the products that, that we've presented today. Um, I wouldn't write off the possibility of sure someday uh, working with Q5X to do something that's show link enabled, but for the time being, um, you know, what you see here is uh, what we're what we're coming out with. Great. Next question. Will the Q5X transmitters still transmit while charging? Yes. Um, and it's actually one of the things you can do if, if in a situation where you were using that smallest transmitter that only has a four hour battery life. If you should happen to be on a shoot uh, where you wanted to, you know, you're getting near the end of the battery life, you can actually connect it to an external battery pack um, and, and continue to transmit with it. So um, some people actually use that. Uh, they'll get a, a large external battery pack connect a standard player mic to it and they can get 20 hours of battery life uh, by running it from a from an external battery pack or, or more it's, it's just, just it's totally limited by the size of the external battery great all right i think this one we already answered but i'll just present it again is there any chance that the q5x will get the automatic interference detection and avoidance that ex exists in the adx range yeah we kind of covered that in the first question um like i said um anything's possible but to date um, ADX transmitters exclusively do interference avoidance. Um, like I said, the spectrum manager can manage backups for devices that you don't have a network connection to. Um, so a, a great example of how I would do this um, as a as a you know audio person myself is I would um, um, I would have my spectrum manager managing backups, and then if I needed to fix a frequency on a Q5X channel, I would just look at the spectrum manager, find a new frequency, type it into the mic commander. 
and then boom. So you don't have automatic frequency avoidance, but it's it's you don't have to actually get the transmitter from the user. You can still do it remotely. Um, it just takes that extra step of, of using the mic commander today anyways. Okay. Next question. So if you want to monitor the Q5X transmitter, can you use either wireless workbench or do you have to use both programs? Well, it depends on what you want to monitor. Um, you know, all the things that I showed you in wireless workbench are monitorable, um, <clears throat> you know, through the Q5X transmitter. So things like battery life, signal strength, channel quality, uh, the battery type you're using, whether or not the, um, the device is um, uh, transmitting uh, at low power, medium power, or high power. But there are some very unique things that you get from mic, mic control. You know, if you actually want to uh, change the gain from your computer, um, you would do that from mic controller. You wouldn't do it from wireless workbench. So it really depends on what you want to monitor and what you want to control. But pretty much all the monitoring capability is there in wireless workbench. The control capability more exists in, in mic control. Okay. Can you program the Q5X transmitters using the IR port, or is that only done via the mic commander? No, you can do it via IR. So um, in a previous slide, I had a picture of the uh, player mic uh, with a little circle, yellow circle showing you where the IR ports were. There are actually two little ports right on the top of the unit. Um, you just line that up with the receiver IR window, and um, assuming you have the updated firmware, as I mentioned earlier, you should be good to go. All right. What lavalier microphones are most commonly used with Q5X? Obviously, Twinplex would work great. Yeah, and I can, I'll say that we're very excited to be able to, to offer Twinplex. Um, but the, the, the basically we will support any lav mic. Um, uh, we have up to five volts of, of bias voltage. So um, really any lav mic. We typically um, uh, use uh, well, we, we, use, we use a wide range. There's certainly, there's some specific waterproof microphones we use with the aqua mic. All right. Yeah, I mean, you you all know um, the um, the landscape for lavalier microphones. We're sure is obviously not the only player with with Twinplex. There's DPA, there's uh, uh, Voice Technologies, there's Sennheiser, there's um, uh, Electrosonics and, and everyone else. And, and, and just like the Sure transmitters, um, the Q5X transmitters can support all of those. Of course, you have to get a single pin limo connector on them. Uh, that's yes. the, the one caveat. And and we can provide. We, we actually provide uh, microphone elements from from various manufacturers. So we can we can source them and provide them with the limo connectors. As I said earlier, we can also receive microphones from a customer and terminate them with that single pin connector or or the six pin in the case of the Uncle Mike. All right. Once again, this is one we kind of already answered, but it goes a little bit deeper, I think. Um, is IR sync possible for frequency setup? If yes, will there be an IR pre will there be IR preset parameters for it? Yeah, that's definitely something that we can support via via Q5X transmitters, um, IR presets. Um, all the IR presets that are supported via AD series. Um, relatively speaking, because of the connector type, you know, we have some presets that, that are connector specific, but generally speaking, all the IR presets that you have in other AD transmitters you can have in, um, in Q5X transmitters. So good question. Great. All right. Next question. Uh, there's a couple of questions here, so I'll just kind of take it. Uh, we'll take them to, we'll take them separately. Uh, first question, how will repair, repair service and potential replacement requests be handled? And what is the service repair guideline strategy? So I'll cover that, and I, Paul probably can touch on it too because it requires um, some things on the Q5X side. But on the Sure side, um, you know, it, it all starts with where you purchase the product. Um, if you purchase the product from Q5X, um, obviously Q5X will be the point of contact for everything relating to your return or your servicing of the product. Um, if you purchase the product from Sure. Um, obviously, you have a Sure invoice. Um, you can call Sure, and Sure can arrange a uh, a service repair or replacement through Q5X. So we're not repairing uh, Q5X transmitters in our service facilities in in um, in, in you know where where they're located. We're actually um, sending those products up to Q5X in London, Ontario. So we do have a plan that, to where if you were to send your products to Sure Niles. We would our Wheeling is actually where our service center is Wheeling Illinois. We would forward them up to Q5X in 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 uh, Toronto, 
I'm sorry, in London, Ontario, but we would really um, encourage um, you to send them directly to Q5X for the fastest turnaround time. So Paul, you probably have some comments on that too. Yeah, I guess uh, start with the, the good news is we don't really have a high demand for repairs. Uh, these are designed to be very awesome. rugged. And, and what, what, one of the, uh, I, I guess for, from a, a manufacturer's perspective, one of the downsides is they, they last for a long, long time without any repairs. Um, but we have a, a the ability to uh, to do repairs here. Obviously, in the case of the player, Mike, as you can tell by that sealed rubber case, in order to do any repairs internally to it, we have to cut the rubber case off and replace the rubber case. It's not an expensive repair, um, and we can do that. Uh, people often ask from a repair perspective about the life of the batteries. The batteries last a, a, a long time. Um, so, you know, many years before a battery would have to be replaced. So, and at the time a, a battery would be replaced in the, in the player mic, we would have to cut the rubber case off and put the battery on it. And, uh, so it's a low cost for doing that. Great. All right. Next question. Uh, how will the customization and modification requests be handled? Um, in, for instance, like, uh, getting Twinplex mics uh, available for Q5X transmitters. Well, Paul um, has the ability to source um, Twinplex mics directly. So there are a few scenarios, actually. The preferred scenario is you purchase a Twinplex microphone through Q5X. Q5X can re-terminate that um, product for you, um, you know, depending on six-pin limo or single-pin limo. Um, if you don't want it to get a modification, you can use the adapter cable, too. So there is an adapter cable that goes like for example, two pin limo or three pin limo to single pin limo. So you could just use the adapter cable as well. Um, I'll tell you it's not cheap and it's not because Q5X are sure trying to gouge anyone. It's because limo connectors are expensive. And, uh, um, and I think most people on this call probably know that if you've ever tried to purchase a limo connector, they're very expensive. So it, you know, it's, it's not a cheap connect cable for what it does, um, but it's definitely a convenient thing to on hand to have on hand um, in the event that you have a microphone that you don't have the time to re-terminate, for example. Um, but, um, you know, sure, theoretically, could could we do all sorts of, of servicing on our products. Um, we're not set up right now to, to do a single pin limo modification. So, um, you know, it's something we could plan someday in the future, theoretically. Um, but, but the planner record right now is for um, you to use the instructions that Q5X provides use the adapter uh, cables that either Sure or Q5X supplies um, or have Q5X do the, uh, the termination for you. Great. Yeah, and the one comment I make about that as well is, is certainly in the case of the aqua mic, uh, you really need to, if, if you're going to have it in a situation where it's going to be submersed in water, you need to have the waterproof connector. So to use the, we have an adapter cable with the six pin uh, on one end and a normal mic connector on the other end to to do that. That was fine for a sh for a show where you're basically looking for the long battery life, for, and you're not going to put it in water. But if for the aqua mic, in order for the the mic to work properly, uh, you need to have the the waterproof connector. Great. Speaking of uh, water resistance, uh, what about water resistant or submersible mics that would survive a plunge into the water? Yeah. Go, go ahead. No, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So we, we, we've a number of mics we've used on that front, and and there's certainly uh, different mic manufacturers have uh, waterproof uh, rated uh, microphone elements. Traditionally, we've used a lot of of Countryman EMWs. We've used um, VT 500s from Voice Technologies, and we've used some some DPAs, um, and. You know, basically, uh, as well, we use a lot of Countryman B3s, uh, and that really is at the preference of our of our customers. And everybody seems to have their own favorite for for waterproof situations. The one thing we do try to do as much as possible from a sweat perspective is we try to point the mic element down, and then we have less possibility of a of a drop of water formulating at the top of the of the mic element and uh, and causing interference that way. But we've had very we've had very good luck. Uh, obviously, the microphone itself doesn't work underwater, but if someone goes into the water, comes back up, it clears very quickly and starts transmitting the game right away. All right. Uh, next question: uh, Can you use external two point four antennas with the mic con commander? Not legally. <laughs> good to know. Yeah, you you're not supposed to do that, um, but it does have the right 
connector on it if you want to break the law. We don't advise that. <laughs> no. All right. Next question. Do you and, have and, and the the, ra the range is, the range is very good. And obviously, like any two point four gig application, it's noise floor sensitive. But in in most environments, the range of the mic commander is, you know, it, it's it, it, in a low noise floor. It we can cover an entire soccer pitch uh, from the mic commander. Um, so obviously, if the stadium is full of people, that's not the case. But but even then, we would still get you know close to one hundred feet. Next question: Do you have any ex uh, Do you have any experience? How many RF attenuation will I get by using the aqua mic in ten meters underwater compared to using it on the surface of water? So that is a topic related. That's a, 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 a an RF specific topic, and I couldn't tell you what the path loss is of RF over water versus free air. Um, I think RF propagates pretty well underwater. Uh, provided that the, the device is properly waterproofed. Yeah, um, it's, but that's it's, also free, it's also frequency sensitive, so it's not the same at all frequencies. Uh, sure. we, we, we've had relatively good luck with uh, people wearing this on a belt, uh, like on a bathing suit, and standing waist deep in water where their waist is underwater and their sort of the chest is showing. Um, the, the, the RF does fall off pretty quickly when you get, if you were down 10 meters, it, it Unless you get very low frequency, um, it, it's uh, it falls off pretty significantly. But there's nothing to hear down there anyway. <laughs> That's true. Right. Yeah. Next. The bike, the bike element itself won't work. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, How... fish are really quiet. <laughs> How long does a pack have to be on a charger to achieve a full charge? So that depends on the battery size, um, and it's like most. Uh, charge uh, systems, the, 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 the battery charges to about a 75 or 80 percent charge relatively quickly. So within 30 to 40 minutes, you would get uh, a 75 percent charge. Then the, the final 25 percent takes a longer period of time, but typically between an hour and a half and two hours for, for a full charge. But you can, in a very short period of time, you can get a significant partial charge. Great. Are the adapter cables waterproof as well? No, the 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 the, the six pin limo portion of the of the adapter cable is waterproof, but the connector on the other end is not waterproof. So by definition, it's not waterproof. Okay. Um, and having having said that, the, the transmitter itself, all the connectors on the trans on the pack itself are waterproof. And so if you were to drop the uh, the pack into water with no connectors on, no antenna connectors or no mic connector on it, it's totally waterproof at that point. You'd only have then the only issue would you be have water in the inside the connector, but there's no damage to the electronics of the transmitter. All right. Will the mic commander be available in five G? There's not a plan for it. It's a 2.4 gig. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Zigbee radio, and as Michael said, it's not it's not a not the the Zigbee protocol. It's a customized Zigbee protocol. Um, so we're not planning to do it in, in five five G. Okay. Yeah, we like the um, uh, um, unlicensed portions of the spectrum, 2.4 included. It should be noted, five G's. It's a technology, right? It's not a bandwidth. Um, it, it's, it's utilized on lots of bands actually. Um, and, um, in the United States, at least, um, some of the 5g rollout is happening in, in bands that, that you need licensed approval for. So, uh, it, sure. It's not easy for sure to make a, a 5g device today that meets the needs of a wireless microphone user, totally different topic. Um, but just for the purposes of the discussion, we're using, um, a, a well-known, um, unlicensed portion of the spectrum. Great. And, and it's interesting with the, with the Zigbee protocol, there's the Zigbee channels, the high end of the Zigbee channels actually uh, are separate from most Wi-Fi channels. So as we, we typically use channels uh, 25 and 26 uh, of, uh, on our, and, and there, there are the multiple channels you can use, uh, but we use, in using channels 25 and 26, we, we were sort of sitting aside the side from, from the rest of the Wi-Fi world. Another question about service. Um, units requiring service in Europe or Asia, do they need to re be returned to Canada for repair, or are there local service centers overseas in those regions? How are you currently? How are you going to handle your overseas service inquiries? So right now, we are only selling the products in uh, North America and in Western Europe, 
And the way that we're handling it in all regions is essentially the same. Uh, Western European uh, folks will be sending their product uh, ultimately to Canada for serviceability in the in the in the in the present situation. Uh, so if you're in anywhere in North America or anywhere in Western Europe, you'll be uh, um, sending your product to, to to London. Now, correct me if I'm uh, if I'm wrong on that, Paul. No, that's our, our current plan. Is the uh, we don't have repair centers set up. Um, as as the volume grows on this, we we likely will uh, create centers in different locations around the world, and uh, if in, in circumstances we would uh, arrange potentially for a uh, uh, a loaner program. So if people have uh, the possibility of of getting a, a loaner unit if they're in the, if if they're in dire need of a of a unit, although we can do, we can turn things around very quickly once we get it, but we just have it's primarily the transportation time. Yeah, and keep in mind that in Western Europe, um, you know, Sure is distributing these products. So, um, you know, it's a, it's more of a sales transaction that I can't necessarily guarantee, but a possibility might be you bought the product from Q5X, um, but it needs a repair. You could send that product to, um, um, to Q5X in London and the local um, uh, distributor, Sure UK, could send you a unit. Mm -hmm. And somehow we make good on the the the, the back end. That hasn't that ha that is not a plan of record up to this point. But as Paul mentioned, as the business grows, um, as we get more interest, um, um, obviously we will have to step up our capabilities. It's worth noting just while we're here on the service section that um, we are uh, you know we're taking the crawl, walk, run approach with this collaboration. We don't want to get too deep in up front and then end up not being able to deliver on service or on repair or on lead times and delivery. So uh, that's why we're, we're starting out the way we are, kind of modest in, the North, in North America and in, in Western Europe. Um, that's the only place we have compliance approvals today for. Um, but again, um, you know, these questions and follow-up emails to the sure folks uh, will help us understand what their true um, need is outside of those two regions. And if there are, if there is a valid business case, you know, we will be there um, not only with product to sell, but also with uh, service capabilities too. Yeah. And I'd, I'd reiterate what I said earlier that, you know, we've, we've been building this form factors, not, not the actual digital versions of this, but in terms of the form factors, we've been building these for 20 years. There's, there's not a high, a high requirement for service. Um, uh, they, they're very rugged. Great. All right. And then um, since we're a little over time, I'm just going to ask one last question. Um, if we didn't get to your question, many apologies. Uh, please feel free to visit sure.com slash contact to send that question into us and we'll get an answer for you. Um, so the last question of the day regarding the battery charges, will you? is there a memory effect from doing short charges on the Q5X? No. Fantastic. All right. That just about wraps up our time. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you learned a little something and we'll hope to see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much, guys. Stay safe. Have a great day. Thank you.